St. Jonas Mecca's here in uh, Brooklyn, in my uh, place, which is where I live and I work here. You can call it my loft, my studio, my house, my, uh, my everything, where I have everything that I have done and still have with me is here, all the, the boxes, books, uh, uh, and there is a lot of it because I never throw anything out. Everything that uh, comes into this house becomes part of my working material. These are all my working materials, what you are seeing, what you will see. So this is my camera, my Sony that I'm using. This is when I with my very special typewriter, uh, Olympia Deluxe, my uh, books, my some of my books, my poetry. These are my, my um, I used up four bullets and uh, they don't uh, work anymore. They, uh, they, something is uh, wrong, you see. No, no length. This is Moviola, old-fashioned Moviola. I edited all my films on this. Uh, the take sound and image. This is just a viewer uh, made this a very unique, uh, rare copy, but it did not catch uh, the imaginations of other filmmakers. I did all my films. I edited, pre-edited here, and then on the Moviola, if you saw, I, I finished with the, with the sound. Do you remember what the first film you edited on this was? Oh, it was uh, Walden. Uh, Walden was edited on this. I live. Therefore I make films. I make films. Therefore I live. Life. Movement. I make home movies, therefore I live. I live, therefore I make home movies. They tell me I should be always searching, but I'm only celebrating what I see.
I bought my first Polex camera in, in somewhere December 1949. I arrived in New York October 30th, 1949. So New York was the uh, beginning of my cinema, was my university of cinema, the film societies, the film series at the Museum of Modern Art. And of course, the 42nd Street one was my Cinematheque. 42nd Street had about 15 movie theaters, Apollo Theater. I could see there, you know, the Sika or, you know, the European post-war films. For like uh, three or four years, I did not miss a single film opening, a single film screening, a single theater piece that opened, or ballet, or music. So I was like an empty sponge, ready to absorb anything, everything, like a garbage can, that anything, you know, would be dropped into me. I absorbed, took everything. I did not try to, uh, did not follow scripts, did not, I, I was just filming, and the same I'm doing now. I, I don't work with uh, uh, preconceived ideas. I, I film what happens, and I never know what will happen. I don't live according to plans. I film a lot of Andy Warhol through his, you know, him working, doing nothing, and that footage sat on the shelf. And then uh, one day I receive a call from. Saint uh, Pompidou, and they said, we are having a huge retrospective of Andy Warhol. We heard that you have some footage of Andy Warhol. Could you show it? Could we, you send it to us for that occasion? So, okay, now there is a need. So I, I put it together, sort of, uh, that it wouldn't bore, uh, you know, I sometimes eliminate some. Uh, uh, because of that, the uh, uh, occasion, uh, I finished that film, Scenes from the Life of Andy Warhol. It has been noted by others that this is very unique. Like you see Warhol in real life. It's not sitting in front of some television, some interviewer asking questions. Here he is, like, uh, uh, by himself, playing with children, doing nothing, sitting by the ocean or something. Nothing is happening, it's real, real world. In 1965, somewhere there, uh, uh, this guy Peter Moore, who was uh, one of the editors of Popular Photography magazine, uh, he had a column there. He had a survey questionnaire uh, 
he wanted to know how many uh, home movie cameras, 8 millimeter cameras, that there were in the United States. And he found out that there were about 6 million cameras uh, were floating somewhere in the United States, uh, recording uh, trips to India, weddings, baby was born, home, home movies, 6 million. Where is that footage? <laughs> I mean, the, uh, the record of uh, humanity, of American people's lives uh, recorded. There are moments there. It's still a lot survives, but uh, much nobody took it seriously. Uh, even uh, President <laughs> Kennedy had one in his raincoat uh, pocket. Uh, I was visiting uh, Jackie Onassis, and we were talking about um, because cinema, uh, suddenly she stops. It's ah, I remember that somebody had given just like a couple of weeks before Kennedy was shot a little movie camera which he used to carry in his raincoat pocket, and he shot some, and then he had no time. It he said ah, by the way, I still have that raincoat in the closet. The camera must be in the pocket. And she went to the closet, to, and the camera, little 8 millimeter camera, was in the pocket. So everybody was, uh, you know, taking home footage with president. As I was moving ahead, occasionally I saw brief glimpses of beauty. That I uh, finished in the year 2000 uh, because a festival in Avignon asked me to give them something. And um, but I said, yeah, I have a lot of footage, but right now I don't have any money you know, to pay for the lab work for anything that we are going to pay for it. Okay, we're paying the expenses, I will do it. I, I decided to, to keep only on my family life, to give it some sort of y y unity. Since I had a lot of it, I ended up with almost five hours long film. I broke it down to chapters, I decided not to have it in a chronological order. Actually, I could not even recreate uh, the chronology in many times. So I just uh, strung them together the way I found them, the film reels, on the shelf, <laughs> more or less. Uh I have never been able, really, to figure out <laughs> where my life begins and where it ends. I have never, never been able to figure it all out, what's all about, what it all means. 
So when I began now to put all these rolls of film together, to string them together, the first idea was to keep them chronological. But then I gave up, and I just began splicing them together by chance, the way that I found them on the shelf. Because I really don't know where any piece of my life really belongs. So let it be, let it go, just by pure chance, disorder. There is some kind, some kind of order in it, order of its own, which I do not really understand, same as I never understood life around me, the real life, as they say, or the real people. I never understood them. I still do not understand them. And I do not really want to understand them. With me switching from Bolex to Sony, it uh, opened completely uh, new areas of content. I can go into any situation without disturbing anybody, and I can run as long as I want. Uh, like Bolex, there is this single frame I could uh, concentrate on, it could be very abstract, like uh, record, uh, play with single frames and rhythms and colors. You see a lot of that in Walden. With, with video, you, cannot, you can do that later in editing, but during the taping, you can con have some control, but it's limited. It's not that. So I became more uh, like anthropologist. I was always a little bit anthropologist interested in catching the situation, you know, what's happening there. But now I think, I think I'm more and more uh, anthropologists interested in, in getting to the essence of certain situations of, of humanity today, uh, uh, situations which uh, are similar in uh, here and in China and in Brazil, like uh, somebody gives you a present wrapped up. Now, that can happen in Tokyo, in uh, Buenos Aires, in Brooklyn. This present is here, and a good friend send it to, sent it to me. Now, with my friends, I'm, I'm unwrapping it. That's an event, unwrapping a present sent to you by a friend. It, has taken place millions of times in various situations. And something happens during that moment when you do something for a friend to catch that moment, the mood, the feeling. That has been my challenge. So, so I'm interested in those situations. Now, I exist everywhere. I have no home. But this was not planned. Just I just looked around and found myself in love with too many places. My feet could walk anywhere. I am Troubadour. I am Tramp. I have been moving for years. Me too. As you can see those boxes. You can see me in Pro One. And... By the Tower of Pisa. Second Street Y, box office or ninety the ninety second. Now in Green Pine, Brooklyn. Dot org. N two Y. 
And who knows where I will be tomorrow? I'm having one of the busiest end of the years this year, because I have a complete retrospective of my films and videos at um, Pompidou in Paris. Then I have in London at Serpentine Gallery uh, my maybe uh, biggest exhibition of mixed other materials. Uh, any questions? <laughs>